Shalom, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> so interesting article. And it's someone I'm watching, so it immediately flags on my radar. And I just want to present you the article and then what I'm seeing as a possibility here, which is really interesting. The article says Saudi prince, this would be MBS Mohammed bin Salman, fears assassination if he normalizes ties with Israel. Now, my first question before I even read the rest of the article is why would you say this publicly? Why would you make this world knowledge? If you were fearing an assassination, you'd be speaking to your closest people, your security advisors, you'd be keeping it on the down low. You wouldn't be making sure the whole world knows there might be an assassination of me. Mohammed bin Salman tells the US lawmakers he fears being killed as Anwar Sadat was if he normalizes relations with Saudi Arabia and Israel. The Crown Prince said that this is a real fear. Despite his concerns, however, officials say that he says he remains committed to achieving a normalization deal with Israel and the US in the long term. So I fear I'm going to be assassinated. Make sure everybody knows, even though I fear I'm going to be assassinated, I am committed to making sure that this normalization and deal with Israel and the US takes place. And I, the one who's fearing assassination, will make sure it gets done. So now the whole world knows they're all focused on this. They're watching him a little bit closer. And immediately I'm thinking Revelation 13. The Apostle John records visions that he saw there, including the sign of a dragon and a terrible beast. Now, this beast had 10 horns and seven heads, 10 crowns on its horns, on each head a blasphemous name. Revelations 13, 1, as John watches, one of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world watching was filled with wonder and followed the beast. 13 verse 3. The significance of the healing of the beast's deadly wound is that because of the healing, the world unites in following the beast. This is why some prophecy watchers even consider Adolf Hitler back from the dead as a potential antichrist because he had a fatal head wound. And in this generation, you would still recognize him if he stood up tomorrow on an international stage and said, ta-da, here I am. You'd know that this is Hitler. And hold up, he died from a gunshot wound and it's now miraculously healed. And here he is. Let's worship the beast. But what if it's someone that's alive today, someone rising in power and prominence in the background, spearheading and prepping everything and suddenly gets assassinated? ensuring we all knew to watch for that assassination and due to a miraculous healing, a resurrection, if you will, everyone will follow him. The deadly wound was healed. The earth is amazed at the beast and its apparent resurrection power. The world worships the beast. Revelation 13, 3. Recognizing that Satan has given his authority to this beast the world will also worship the dragon. Revelation 13 verse 4. So they both get worshipped openly because of this sign, this miraculous power of resurrection. As John is describing these things, he describes a second beast that appears. The second beast influences the whole earth to worship the ten-horned, seven-headed beast whose deadly wound was healed. Revelation 13, 12. The second beast does so by performing signs and miracles and putting the focus on the beast whose deadly wound was healed. Revelation 13, 14. So again, the devil has no original thoughts, apparently, because he's trying to replicate everything of the real Messiah. Jesus really died and then conquered death and the grave and rose. He really has the power over death and Hades. He has conquered death completely. 
The resurrection power belongs to Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Now he wants to replicate that publicly. Shoot, have a wound in the head. You die. You get brought back to life. You're miraculously healed. They'll probably leave the scar there so people can touch it and fawn over it because they need to replicate a weak mirror-like imitation of the truth. So this is a possibility. It's a distinct thing that could happen. And when I read articles like this, it very neatly fits into a possibility. That being said, I absolutely admit to you at any time that it is a real possibility that the Antichrist, who is definitely around today sitting in the shadows, could be someone we haven't seen at all. Could be someone that's going to step out right after we're removed and come to his prominent power. It could be. Absolutely. But it could be someone we see now. Someone like MBS. And again, I'm not looking for Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. I'm watching for his return. I'm listening for his footsteps and the rustling of the wheat as he moves through the field while I'm laboring in the field with him because I know he is that close. I'm going to be working in the field, I'm going to be ministering, I'm going to be handing out Bibles and I'm going to feel someone bump my shoulder and I'm going to look around and Yeshua is going to be there like, Psst, let's go. It's time. Aren't you hungry? Let's get to that feast. We are that close people, but it is exciting while we're watching to put these puzzle pieces potentially together. God bless. Keep looking up. Shalom.